the last time we visited the Baja Peninsula to drive an Audi, see Escape from Baja from CD's July 1983 issue, we were drenched by a tsunami triggered by a major earthquake in Japan. This time, it's hot, peaceful, and relaxing. We're on our best behavior at the Cabo San Lucas Resort destination for two reasons, Audi has begun building Q5S in a new plant located 1,250 miles southeast of here, and pre-production versions of this 2018 crossover are available for test drives. The crossover craze has made the Q5, launched in 2008 and refreshed in 2013, Audi's top-selling US model. We proclaimed the Q5 the star of the luxury compact crossovers in our 2009 comparison test when it surpassed the best that BMW, X3, Lexus, RX350, Mercedes-Benz, GLK350, and Volvo, XC60, could muster. Five different power trends have kept this Audi current over the years, and two years ago it sired Porsche's Admiral Merkin. More than 1.6 million examples of the first-gen design have been sold globally, making the Q5 one of Audi's most successful products. Recognizing the importance of intelligently sized car-based trucks in the global scheme of things, Audi joined the crowd of brands, eight others by our count, with manufacturing bases in Mexico. Following three years of construction and after bringing 3,300 employees on board, the $1.3 billion San Jose Quiapa plant in Mexico's Puebla province has begun producing Q5S for global consumption. The Q5 is new from the ground up, according to Audi, but that's not to say it's an about face from the first generation. Practically every part has been changed and moving from the previous MLB platform to the new version including suspension and powertrain components. Nearly 200 pounds are said to have been trimmed. The hood, liftgate, front bumper beam, suspension members, front brake calipers, brake booster, pedal mount, steering column housing, and key powertrain components are aluminum. Two large aluminum castings are welded into the high-strength steel unibody to anchor front suspension components. The rear of the 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission is a magnesium die casting. Quattro 2.0 Audi engineers converted the Q5 to what amounts to a front driver with an ingenious Quattro system that employs what Audi calls Ultra Technology. This provides all-wheel drive on demand, with the front wheels handling propulsion in normal cruising conditions. The clever parts are two computer-controlled clutches that engage to work to the rear wheels. One is located at the tail of the transmission, and the other is inside the rear differential. This cost-effective arrangement not only trims weight but also cuts friction by eliminating drive shaft and ring and pinion rotation when maximum traction isn't required. An electronic controller monitors a sensor array to decide when to engage the clutches, sometimes anticipating the need for all-wheel drive during heavy throttle applications and or tight turns. Only a few milliseconds are needed to step from front to all-wheel traction, and we found that transition totally transparent during 200 miles of driving both on and off pavement. As before, a range of 4- and 6-cylinder turbocharged gasoline and diesel engines will power the Q5 globally. A slew of improvements for the gasoline 2.0-liter TFSI engine boosted output to a strapping 248 horsepower with a peak to work of 272 pounds to foot while that engine is more than adequate for typical buyers, driving enthusiasts would surely prefer the 282 horsepower 3.0-liter turbo diesel V6. It was our clear favorite during back-to-back -back driving stints, the result of a diesel smooth quiet demeanor, complemented by its energetic and immediate response to the slightest incremental accelerator pedal pressure. The fuel type, consumption, and cost differences all fade to insignificance when the choice is between 2.0 or 3.0 liters and 4 or 6 cylinders. Unfortunately, the fallout from the Volkswagen Group's diesel emissions cheating scandal means Q5 consumers in the United States likely won't be offered that choice. And while Audi engineered a six-speed manual transmission for the Q5, there's no chance of that gearbox reaching the land of the free. The new Q5's exterior is more car-like than the previous generation, 
with a prominent six-sided grille, squinty LED headlamps, and a lower hood. The character line that flows lazily along the side surfaces is sharply creased to make the most of the sun and shadows that gamble over the profile. At the rear, the dark recesses and diffuser ribs are pure designer whims. The exhaust outlets are tucked up and out of sight. Chassis Champs The added stiffness of the Q5 structure was clearly evident in the lack of shake and quiver over Mexico's proliferating speed bumps and coarsely textured pavement. All the vehicles we drove were equipped with the available air spring suspension, which we hope will be an option in our market. The main benefit with this arrangement, which would add at least $3,000 to the price, is ready control over ride height. You could lower the vehicle a couple of inches to load heavy cargo into the luggage compartment or lift it to traverse ruts and rocks off pavement. The air springs maintain an even keel during towing or while transporting a full gang of Amigos and their gear. Although some would appreciate the air suspension's capabilities, it's hardly an essential Q5 ingredient. In large part, that's because of the electronically controlled variable dampers, the Reliance Sun Heroes of the Q5's chassis. Supplied by ZF, tuned by Audi, and called continuous damping control, this system takes the sting out of bumps, manages pitch and roll, and blocks most of the road noise generated by the Michelin Latitude Sport 3 summer tires. It likely will be offered as optional equipment with and without the air springs. Based on our drive in Mexico, the shrewd shopper shouldn't miss this chassis upgrade. The Q5's heavy front doors latch with bank fault solidity, which is appropriate considering the likelihood that lightly optioned US models could top $50,000. The top and S-line trim includes a lovely flat-bottomed steering wheel, genuine open grain wood trim panels, matte-finished metal accents, suited door inserts, and elegant molded dash top surfaces. Decorative stitching is reserved for the diamond patterned leather seat surfaces. The optional 12.3-inch virtual cockpit instrument cluster is highly functional and attractive, and it can accommodate future software upgrades installed at the dealer. Audi's MMI rotary and touchpad controllers, located on the center console just ahead of the T-shaped shifter, operate the central 8.3-inch display screen. The pad reads pinch and zoom commands plus address information entered by finger touch, one letter at a time. Overall, it's a reasonably intuitive and easy-to-operate infotainment system. While we expect most customers not to bother, the drive select switchgear to the left of the shifter lets the thoughtful driver dial in the chassis in power paint to his or her liking. The list of variables includes throttle response, damper firmness, transmission shift behavior, and steering effort. Each of the six choices offers sub-menus containing fascinating insights such as a pictogram revealing pitch, roll, and steering angles, especially useful for negotiating troubled subdivisions. Regrettably, there is no way to remedy the near-total lack of road feel proffered by the Q5's electrically assisted rack and pinion power steering. However, that didn't keep us from noticing heavy understeer at the adhesion limit, which is what you get with a front-heavy chassis in predominantly front-wheel drive. At least the brake pedal is perfectly calibrated with not too much travel, no squish, and enough feel to let you modulate deceleration like Greyhound's driver of the year. We found the Q5's back seat one of its most endearing features. It has three seat belts but only the two outboard positions are suitable for adult use due to the substantial driveline tunnel intrusion and the hard center seat cushion. A half inch longer wheelbase adds the groom, but the real beauty of the second row is its ability to slide several inches fore and aft. In addition, the split folding backrests can be latched at three different angles to give tired back sides a break on long journeys. The cargo hold is slightly larger than before, and the lift gate can be opened by sweeping a foot under the rear bumper and closed by touching a button, conveniences that probably will cost extra. We found two USB sockets, a handy 12-volt outlet, and an inductive phone charging pad. Front and rear cross-traffic alert systems have the authority to apply the brakes when and if drivers aren't paying full attention. The adaptive cruise control is easy to operate, even if the stock labels are too small for the bifocal set. 
we did not see any lane departure warning, lane keeping or steering assist switch gear. That equipment is scheduled for introduction after initial customer deliveries have begun. At this juncture, we don't have any real Q5 pricing information, trim level content, or EPA fuel economy ratings. Although production of saleable models has begun, America is not the first to receive vehicles, so it likely will be the middle of next year before the new Q5 arrives. Given America's ravenous appetite for medium-sized crossovers, there surely will be even more competitors on the market to greet Audi's newest Q-Ship, Q-Ship.